Okay, so now that we've talked about the normal curve and we've talked about the standard deviation, we can start to talk about a way of thinking about scores in terms of where they fall in, in terms of a standard deviation. Uh, we've already sort of talked about this when I talked about the, the normal curve, but we're going to talk about it a little bit more right now. So a standard score, and we're going to have a formula for this, or a z-score, right, essentially uses a pretty simple formula. It says that a z-score is equal to, it's a z, is equal to the individual score minus the mean of the set of scores divided by the standard deviation. Like I said, it's pretty simple. So let's assume that we have a standard deviation for some sort of exam of five points, okay? And we have a mean for that uh, set of scores of, let's say, um, 50, just to make it easy, okay? And let's say that you get on this... you get a 60, okay, which doesn't feel very good, and let's assume that this is normally distributed, so this is a normal curve. If you know these things here, then you can use the formula to figure out your, essentially your percentile rank, right? What, how much better you did than everybody else who took the, the quiz or the exam, whatever it is that we're talking about here. So let's just go ahead and plug these things in. So we have the standard deviation, right, is given to us. The mean is given to us. The x value is given to us, okay? So 60 minus 10 then gives you z-score is equal to 10 divided by 5. So your z-score is 2. Pretty simple, right? Now this z-score of 2 is going to equate to a location on a normal curve, right? Because we know that, because we know that it says here that this is a, uh, pick another color, that this is a normal curve. So we know that if we have a normal curve, which I'll pull up for us in a minute, okay, use the frequency of scores. So this is the mean, median, and mode, right? And we know that that's, uh, what, 50? And we know that you're two standard deviations above 50. So you are right here. This is your scores right here at this point on this line. Okay. And um, we can then tell how many people have scored worse off than you. Because we know, because this is a normal curve, remember. Remember, this is a normal curve. Because we know that, we know that 50% of the scores falls below the mean because it's symmetrical and that all the scores fall under here. So this is 50%. And then we can look up, or if we have it memorized, we just know that between the second uh, standard deviation and the mean, another percentage of scores will fall. And to be honest, I can't remember it, so we're going to look it up. So the easiest way to look it up is to pull up a copy of the normal curve table. Okay, so here we have the normal curve. And we know, right, that you were two standard deviations above the mean. This is a z-score of plus 2. z-score is equal to plus 2. That's what you got, right? So from here... Uh, we know that this is 50% of scores go down here, 50%, okay? And then from here to here, we know that that's 13.5% plus 34%, so that's what, uh, 30, 40, 47 point, 
five percent. Yes. Okay. So we take this number, forty-seven point five, and this number, fifty percent, and we add it together, and that'll give us everything from here to the end. Okay. So forty. Yeah. Forty-seven point five plus fifty equals 97.5. So you thought that your 60 on this test was bad, right? So you said 60, oh, that's terrible, oh, this is horrible, right? But in reality, your 60 on this test is really good, and you should be super duper happy. Okay, because in this case, you've actually outscored almost 98%, almost everybody, right, that took the exam. So this is why z-scores are super useful. Now we know, really, relative to everybody else, how did you do? And that is what makes z-scores and standard scores so cool. Let's do one more example. So let's copy down our formula again. Z is equal to x minus the mean divided by the standard deviation, okay? Sorry, my notation is not quite as good as it ought to be. Let's try it one more time. Z is equal to, not change colors, all right, divided by s, okay? So let's uh, figure it out. Sometimes, if your teacher is mean, they will give you a set of scores, and they will have you calculate the mean and standard deviation. So if you get all the scores, then you would have to figure out or calculate the mean first. You're going to need the mean to get the standard deviation. One, calculate the mean. Two, Calculate the standard deviation. Three, <laughs> calculate the Z, right, the standard score. Four, find the Z on table. <laughs> Five, figure the percentage or the percentile. I'm concentrating on the percentile. You can figure out all kinds of other things from standard scores, but the percentile really is, is the thing that makes the most sense. Okay? Now, we're going to cut down on all of this because I'm going to give you these two things will be given to you in most of my examples. And if you're my student, then you should be thankful I don't give you all the scores. All right, uh, let's, let's just try this again. Okay, so z is equal to x minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. Let's say that your score on an exam, let me redo this. Let's say that the mean score on an exam we know is uh, 100 because it's some sort of weird standardized exam. Say that the standard deviation is 12. Okay, um, yeah, it's 12, and let's say that your score on it is equal to, and, what would be an easy one, maybe an 88, yeah, an 88, okay? Now, I know you, some of you just figured it out in your head, but let's just go through the process anyway, okay? So the Z score is equal to X. 88 minus the mean divided by the standard deviation, okay? And obviously you would need to know, if you're going to use this to figure out the percentile, right, then you need to know that this is a normal distribution. If it's not a normal distribution, you can still calculate a standardized, a standard score, but it, it just doesn't mean a whole lot. When it's normally distributed, it means a whole lot more. So let's concentrate on it being normally distributed. 
The z score in this case is equal to 88 minus 100, which gives us what negative negative 12. I think I did that right, right? Yeah, negative 12 divided by 12. The z score is equal to negative 1. Now we go to our table. Okay. So we got a z-score this time of negative 1, right? So it's right here. So the z-score of negative 1 means that from here over, right, we need to know what that is equal to so we know what your percentile rank is. Now there are different ways to do it. One way to do it is just to add up all of these numbers and to keep us consistent, that's just what we're going to do. So some of you are like, well, I know I can, I know this is 50% and this is 34%, so I can add these things together and then subtract it from 100. But let's just concentrate on doing it the exact same way we did before, okay? But there is more than one way to do this. Okay, so in this case, we have 0.5% plus, uh, what is that, 13.5%, so that takes us to 14% plus 2%, so 14, sorry, so 14 plus 2 is 16, okay? So your score is actually the 16th percentile. This is not good. You should be sad. Okay? All right. So we went ahead. Let's review briefly. We talked about what standard scores are, Z-scores. Most of the time, I'll refer to them as Z-scores. And we talked about what they mean and why they're useful, especially when you have data that's normally distributed. This lets us calculate right percentile ranks. And percentile ranks tell us, essentially, compared to everybody else, how are we doing? Which is, in the end, very, very useful. All right, thanks a lot, and I will see you in the next video.